Hey, welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Tony Dudzik, Pick Guardian. Jared Brandon. <laughs> are you getting up to bat or something? What is that? <laughs> hey, everybody. It's me, Todd. Welcome to the Guitar Knobs podcast. We are thrilled to death that you are with us for this exciting voyage. Woo! Of the Guitar Knobs podcast and um, Jared Brandon, <laughs> <laughs> yes, batting yeah. third, yeah, <laughs> Jared uh, Brandon. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, go on, Todd. Yeah, thanks. Uh, we've got a very special guest, one that has been brought up uh, quite a few times actually on the show, and I'm excited about this. Uh, guest, who are you? Uh, my name's Connor Kelly, and I run High Spirit Guitars in San Diego. Right mm-hmm. on. High Spirit Guitars. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, High Spirit Guitars, what? I've not heard of this. Where can one go to find out more? Uh, well, I have a dealer in Massachusetts, the Music Emporium, and they sell a lot of my instruments. And then, um, How about somebody who's listening and can get to it really quickly digitally? <laughs> <laughs> What, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> what's your Instagram and stuff? <laughs> oh, yeah. You, um, you can go to High Spirit um, Guitars on Instagram. I have an Instagram there and Facebook. Okay. And then also my website, highspiritguitars.com. Awesome. And you can um, check out all the cool things that he's making. And they mm-hmm. are very cool. Um, I mm, think yes. uh, just just a little uh, a little teaser here. I think one of the thing that we are, and probably a lot of other people are, are kind of hyped up about this is that you've got some really great nuances in your designs that aren't so radical that it feels unfamiliar. There, but you might call them old onces. Old onces, but it's something that makes it go like, ooh, <laughs> just that. <laughs> ooh, yeah. I mean, that was my goal. Uh, making these things, yeah, yeah was yeah. make people go ooh, kind of, kind of like uh, Esqueleto and um, He-Man. No, in Nacho Libre. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> ooh. Anyways, um, okay, we're gonna get on with this. Uh, for maybe we've got a couple new listeners. Maybe there's a chance for that. You think, Jared? What do we do on the show? We talk about gear, mostly about guitars, and even more mostly pedals. And sometimes we have these awesome, awesome episodes that I really enjoy called the 101s. And we get to learn about awesome stuff. And we've like, got a good one coming up. Teaser, oh, teaser, teaser. Oh, yes. Oh, boy. Yep. We just. I think uh, it's going to be with our one of our good buddies, huh? It, well, it might be. It's going to be. I know for sure it is going to be. <laughs> is his name right. Rick? No, no. But uh, anyways, um, <laughs> that's a bad clue. Don't listen to that clue. So, hey, um, we've got a couple of announcements that we're going to get through real quick. And Announce then we're going to start uh, digging into what's going on with Connor Kelly and High Spirit Guitars. Will we talk about things in, uh, that are going on in our music world this week? We will be. We're okay. going to do a four on the floor. A four on the floor. Yeah. Uh, which we we should we should probably explain right now. Again, we've gotten a lot of new listeners lately. Oh, and the four on the floor is what's the four on the floor, Tony? Uh, well, in my book, the four on the floor are the four must-have pedals on your pedal board. You can only have four, so you choose wisely. And that's you know it's it's up in the air. You you choose the yeah. type that you like, the brand. You're really us, running on with this, aren't you? And you need to tell us why you bought it, when you bought it, what it does for you. Yeah, all that stuff. All that stuff. And we're going to get to that. The details. As soon as Tony's done. All right. Furthermore, and in conclusion, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to share a couple of fantastic notes that I got uh, since our last episode. This first one is from Bruce Bacon. Bruce Bacon! Who is responsible for the 101 idea. Uh, so it, we're really excited about this, and it'll be coming up soon. But he also said, guys, thank you for putting your blood, sweat, and tears into the podcast. Mostly R- tears. <laughs> right now, I'm going through a difficult time at work. Mm. And the podcast is one of those positive things I look forward to each week. All right. On the count of three, just silently or not silently, we won't do it silently. You can do it silently or loud if you want. <laughs> I'm giving you all the options. Wow. On the count of three, 
everybody send Brucey some good vibes. One, two, three. Hey, 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 Brucey, feel better, baby. Yeah. All right. Hey, Bruce. Okay, and then here's another one. This one was a big one. This was one, you know, every, occasionally I run upstairs and say to my wife, I'm like, hey, wife, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Me Thor, yeah. you wife. <laughs> uh, this is from Rick Lander. Lender, maybe. How's it spelled? L-E-A-N-D-E-R. I would say Lander. Probably Lander. He is the one who won. He's the one oh, who won yes. the Spark Amp contest. Sparky. Yes. Uh, he sent a message to us, and I was really kind of moved by this. It says, hi. <laughs> That's a great way to start. <laughs> I still moved. can't believe I won. Thanks for running the contest. The amp is still on its way and should be here around the end of the week. Well, by this time, it would have he would have gotten it. Yeah, he's got it in his hands. He's which probably, is very exciting. I hope. I'm probably not your typical listener, but I really enjoy the amp. I'm an old blind guy. Living in a retirement home. I play a poor version of Chet Atkins' fingerstyle on an Ibanez classical with a peso pickup or on a Fender Mexican Strat. Yeah. I've also been trying to learn lap steel, and this amp should help me get much better sound. He's an old guy, and he's still trying to learn new tricks. I love that. You never, you never stop learning. I really enjoy your show. I was heavy into electronics back in the 60s and 70s and even built my own trem pedal. I'd love to get back into it, but found that blind people shouldn't play with soldering irons. <laughs> Probably good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> I, 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 I said support, it, not me. I support okay? that position yes. wholeheartedly. Yes. Uh, I thought that was very funny. Even so, I enjoy listening to the pedal builders talk about their circuit designs and your show about amp repair brought back fond memories of my high school electronic shop. Thanks again. I can't wait to try out the amp. We'll let you know how it goes. Rick. Rick, thank you so much for sending that. We hope you love that amp, and I uh, hope that you have a great time learning lap steel. That's fun. Yeah, absolutely. It's good stuff. Yeah. We got good people out there. And if you're listening, I bet you're one of them, and we would love to hear from you. So share your stories with us. Send us your send us your whatnots and whatevers. And we need some stinking would you rather's for Pete's sake. Yeah. We got a good one this week, but come on, Ooh, keep yeah. them coming, people. That's right. Please do it. All right, we're gonna find out what's going on in our music worlds this week, starting with Tanya Balonsky to mm. my right here. Mm. Then we're gonna check in with our friend Connor. Well, Todd, thank you, you, Tony. Connor, what's going on in Yonks? <laughs> Fine. Fine. Go Fine. Go I, don't have, I, don't, I don't have to do this, you know. I want to hear about stuff, Tony. Okay. Come on. For you, Jared, not for Todd. Thank for you. And, and Connor, too. Yeah. Um, I'm, think, I'm ignoring Todd right now. Okay. Um, so this has been a busy week. Uh, a couple of cool things happened. Um, I was... Uh, trying out a couple of pedals and realized that a couple of my patch cables were not good anymore. In fact, one of them uh, cut so much high end off of, of things uh, that I, uh, I, I just, well, I, I, I threw it against the wall. Oh, my. Yes. <laughs> so, so what do you think that I did? This was, no, this is on a thing that was hanging no, on the wall? This oh. is on a Saturday. What did I do? On a Sunday? No, on Saturday. You went to the thing and you got another cord and stuff. No, I did one thing better. I got these Tour Gear Design cables because we oh, talk yeah. about them quite frequently. Right. Yes, yes. I ordered them on Saturday. I think on either Tuesday or Wednesday, there was a box on my doorstep. Wow. And I got a couple of different sizes because I wanted to monkey around with things. And when I'm testing stuff, I like to do that. So that was a real cool thing. Um, secondly, I was up in Youngstown this past weekend and I picked up, uh, uh, bodies and necks that my buddy Pat, uh, finished for me from Coop he Guitars. Doing He's doing good. Um, and these are the, uh, the guitar project, uh, just as, you know, as a reminder, uh, we talked about them uh, a couple of months back and these are the, uh, Fender Maverick slash custom, uh, replicas. I'm building one for myself and one for uh, a guy who was in a band called Car Sickness back in the early 80s. 
And he was the only guy that I knew that actually had one of these. And the, they were essentially electric 12 bodies that were chopped up and they did all kinds of crazy things with them. Um, so he did all, uh, he's an artist in Western Mass now. And he did all of the, uh, the, the body artwork. And then I had Pat shoot clear over it to protect the, the artwork that was on it. And they came out, I mean, they're just super cool. And will yeah. there be pictures? Uh, yes. I'm, as, as, in fact, they should be posting very soon. I'm, I'm finishing up assembly probably tomorrow or Saturday and, uh, I, I should have them ready to go, but, uh, it's, uh, it's really cool. And, and Carl, who is the, the guy from car sickness, uh, and the artist, he, you know, he had all these things. He said, they're like, there's, they're like cave paintings and there's, there's hidden messages and all these. And it's, I mean, it's, it's really fun stuff. And, uh, and he was super excited about it. And, uh, so he's, you know, I have been keeping him in the loop and sending him photos. So, so hopefully that project will be finished up here, uh, end of this week, first to next, and we'll be moving on to some other cool stuff. Thanks, Tony. You're welcome. Connor, Todd. how about yourself? Um, I'm, re I'm really into country swing right now. Okay. So, yeah. Oh. Um, I actually got, uh, I like funny. country swing. Country swing's great, man. Yeah, I got really into it because um, I looked up T.K. Smith's. Uh, oh yeah, cool guy. His uh, albums he was on, and then I just got really in, sucked sucked into it because um, the guitar playing and the pedal steel is just rad. Um, and also, I'm I'm really into um, swing dancing, so hmm. uh, of course I can't really do that right now. But because um, the wooden used, leg. <laughs> no, no, because oh. the the pandemic, they don't have any like social, <laughs> they don't have any social dances or anything right now. So uh, um, it was kind of cool. located San Diego. Oh, that's right, in California. Yeah. yeah. So are so. you are you more a Bakersfield uh, a country swing style, or are you more uh, kind of a Texasy country well, swing style? That that's a good question. I'm, I'm really sure, actually. Um, I like Hank. Like uh, stuff that's more like uh, classic Hank. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, pretty much all of it, really. Any old country, I, I, I enjoy. Um, for the most you know, part. funny. I started listening to a little bit of Waylon Jennings. Like, oh uh, yeah, yeah. So. I nice. mean, uh, I'm back and forth from Ohio to Nashville, so it's like, well, everybody likes Waylon Jennings in Nashville. May as well see what it's about. So. Uh, right. You know, you were talking about the, you know, sort of the, the country swing. Have you uh, heard of Joel Patterson? Um, I have. Oh, I'm trying to my. remember. Uh, we actually where? gave one of his albums away on the show. Um, he, oh, did really? a, he did a Christmas album that I literally listened to all year long. Oh, and, yeah, cool. and he also and did a Beatles album. He did, yeah, he did a Beatles covers, and it's all in that sort of finger picking like yeah, Chet, hollow Chet body style. Chet style. Right. It's, yeah. He, and he plays all the instruments. There's like oh, seven cool. different kinds of guitars on this thing. It's, it's just so good. Yeah. I've seen him live a couple of times. He plays a, like an ES 295. Yeah. And he just, I mean, he just makes that. Thing. It's flawless. Yeah. It's, it's such a pleasure to listen to that guy. Um, so if you're interested in that kind of thing, definitely check out Joel <laughs> Patterson, everybody. Uh, let's see, Jared, about yourself. I've been looking on Carter Vintage website at Guitars just for the fun of it. And you know, you I've can been, just go down there. You live right there. That's why I've been looking on their website to go down and check out uh, anything that I find interesting. So, mm -hmm. uh, listening to a lot of um, uh, Gordon Lightfoot lately, and he plays. Uh, 12 string guitar. He has a lot of 12 string guitar. Sundown, you better take That's a good song. It. But you know, the, the, the legend, go. You've already done the that. legend no, that's on from the chip so on down to the boring. big lick they call Get You It's goomy. such a boring song, that is. Anyways, go ahead, Jared. I don't really listen to those songs. I like a lot of the stuff that people don't even talk about that I enjoy yeah. that he plays on 12 string. Anyway, so I've been looking for a 12 string guitar. Ah. Uh, just. I don't have one, and I have everything else in the universe. So I thought I should have a 12-string guitar. And I was Can I make a recommendation? Sure. If you don't want to spend a lot of money, get, 
Oh, you already did. Uh oh. Well, go ahead. Well, <laughs> I was going to say for those <laughs> listeners out there that don't want to spend a lot of money on a good quality twelve string guitar, yes, acoustic, yes. Um, the Guild. Uh, what do they call it? It's it's you know, it's an import series. They're made in China, I believe. But it's their uh, basically their their jumbo style in a twelve string. Oh, and I I've that seen must them. sound awesome. Oh, they sound incredible. Yeah, I've I, got I, one. I do like a jumbo. I I've got one, and and I mean one of the problems you'll have with twelve strings, especially acoustic twelve strings, is at some point they're going to need a neck reset. Yeah. So if you can find one and you just want to pluck around, I on think it's it a bridge bit, lift, don't it? Well, the b- bridge bellies up and the neck starts to cave in. Um, it's all about the string tension, but I know a guy. this, uh, yeah, you can do that. You can, but you can buy these guitars for anywhere from 350 to $400 and they're a good yeah. quality instrument. I mean, the, the guild import line, I have, I've owned several. I still the own several. bridge bellies up and the neck caves in <laughs> and pretty soon you say, what a dang mess I'm in. This is my segment, not <laughs> yours. <laughs> <laughs> so tell what did you buy, Jared? <laughs> so uh, I was looking at this 1974 Martin uh, D2812 yeah. uh, at Carter, and it just came on brand new today. Well, it just came on the website today, so yeah. I called, and I said, I thought I'll go down there for lunch, and then I'll go up to HQ and work there for the rest of the day. I called, and they said, oh, we just sold it. I'm like, but you just put it, yeah, but we just sold it. I mean, they're like, stuff just goes really, really yeah, fast. Yeah, so you got to so, call, and you say, hold that guitar, I'm buying it. Yeah, I called too late. And then I was like, I'm still going to win. So I text Dan at Lay's. He's like, yeah, we just got one in like 20 minutes ago. And do you want it? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I do. He's like, all right, cheers. We'll work something out. Nice. So, nice. it, but that's a seven. He has a seventy six. What? What? The, can you help me out? I don't know. I have no idea so what a, a, a oh, Martin not not body. Well, No, no, no. Is, I mean, how much does it cost? Uh, any those are anywhere. They're about two grand for one of those. Uh, oh, that's seventies. I was thinking it was a lot more for some reason. I don't no, know anything it, about it, acoustic guitar. The pre seven nineteen seventy Martins. 12 or 16 are worth a lot more because they use Brazilian rosewood until around 1970. And in the late seven, in 1970, in the late, late 1970, if I could spit it out, they stopped using Brazilian rosewood. And the, the price of those Martins. They um, were way, way ahead of themselves there, or ahead of everybody else. Yeah. They, uh, they went down in price with the Indian rosewood thereafter. So. And I think there's as much as, you know, we could say the same about Fender and Gibson and and as well as Martin. The 70s were definitely not the glory days. Yeah, Martins were okay, but not, you know, no more Brazilian. So, yeah, 60s were much better. It's because everybody was trying to make guitars and get them out the door in the 70s. Yeah. How do you That's say when... Brazilian in, in Italian, Jared? A Brazilian! No, that was, that was pretty tame. <laughs> Is it so? The guitar's in pretty decent shape, and uh, or you have? Yeah, they said yeah. Yeah, the top's got a little wear on it. I'm like, I don't care, man. I'm not really buying it for the looks. I just want to play you know, it. I just wanna, yeah, yeah, I just want to. It's a it. guitar. You nice. know, we'll work something out. I'm as far as price. I yeah, you don't, don't have to disclose it. that. I was just wondering ballpark yeah. what those are. I mean, I've been working with them for years, so yeah, definitely not gonna. Give retail. Mm, that is a great story. Thank you, Jared. Uh, How about you, Todd? Well, yeah. I had a gig last weekend, and I was really excited to put the new, uh, well, the new old flanger that I got from Japan mm. uh, that arrived, and I was it's the Maxon FL9 flanger. I mentioned that that I, that it came last time. Um, it sounds great. I'm. It's just kind of fun to have on the board because it's, it's an old form factor, and I, I think those are really neat. Hey, Todd. Yes. You know, earlier Tony. I said that I uh, needed to get some new patch cables. Yes. Oh, yeah. I looked at, you know, a couple of different options. I, 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 I mean, back in the day, I used to make my own, cut off the okay. old ends, pop on the new ends. But it's it just was... just easier to do something different. <sighs> well, it is, and... Not only easy, convenient, efficient, mm-hmm. 
All the good stuff. All the good stuff. You know what I did? What? I, As I said earlier, I went to Tour Gear Designs and ordered a bunch of cables. New ones. That's smart thinking. Brand spanking yeah. new, different lengths, different patterns. And I'm so glad that I did because these things, are, I mean, you know, I don't always have a permanent board. Like when we get test pedals in and things, I need something to... Do something it's very good quick. to have a bunch of extra ones yeah. so you can and then now I can you know run them all together and do all, anything that I really want to do but awesome I do yeah. have to say the I mean you know in addition to uh, them being very affordable and well made uh, I, I was just shocked at how quickly I got them they are fast they are fast you know what else I did what did you did I tried uh, the guitar knobs discount and and it worked. Of course, it worked. I didn't even. I, I know you, you. You like to mention the you go to their website and stuff. But yeah. at, at the very end, when you place your order, if you type in the guitar knobs, yeah, you get ten percent extra ten percent off. Order. Did so, you buy another cord in that case? Another pass cable. I, I bought about fifty dollars worth wow. of cable. Yeah. So everybody, hey, go to tourgeardesigns.com and you can either put the guitar knobs in the discount code or you can just go to tourgeardesigns.com discount forward slash discount forward slash the guitar knobs and it will automatically do that. Yes. Cool stuff. It worked. Indeed. And I love them. Awesome. Thank you so much to Tour Gear Designs for sponsoring our four on the floor, Jared. Let me get a little bit of that. What is <laughs> One, two, one, two, three. Four on the floor. All right, Connor Kelly of High Spirit Guitars. What is your four on the floor? Well, um, usually I have a an old crybaby wah. Awesome. And uh, like early 70s. Um, you managed to keep a, a one wah the, your whole time? I still have it somewhere. That's amazing. Do yeah. You, I actually have, have two of them. Do you have to maintain it sometimes? Because I, I notice with my old crybabies, you get that, and it's a real loud, you have to clean the thing out or something. Do you ever mess with it? Oh, the, the pot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't, re I don't remember cleaning the pot much. Um, usually, I just adjust the the throw on them so that mm -hmm. you know I get the most throw out of it, and it clicks the right spot. Yeah, know? I can just um, imagine Jared going like trying to disassemble a pot or just disassemble a pedal and putting it back together and then taking it back goes, it keeps on going. <laughs> yes, it does. And it did. Like I thought I, I would fix it. Because that's what and a wah pedal it does. It it's just what it does. And I have to live with it. So I, <laughs> I got smart and I got uh, Dean Morley. And now I have a Mutron. Yeah. You got all the was. Mm. All right. Uh, what's What do you got for number two there, Connor? Um. Well, I... Also, usually have a range master of some sort or booster pedal. Uh, ah. I used to, at one point in time, before I was making guitars, I, I was messing around with pedals. So I always just made, I would make a range master. Um, I actually own one of the, was it the BS, BSM ones? But that was, I don't even know if they're still around. Um, mm. But um, usually, usually, like a range master that is not as, uh, not like the traditional one, but one that has a more um, usually has a higher capacitance in front, so that it um, it's a little thicker mm -hmm. sounding, mm -hmm. uh, kind of like you know Black Sabbath sort of like or a Queen mm -hmm. that kind of sound. Um, so I usually have some sort of boost pedal. Um, nice. Okay. Yeah. Number three, uh, uh, Univox Super Fuzz. Ooh, and, um, it's really cool pedal. Um, you can do a lot of things with it. It's like, actually, I played in this band, and I wasn't even playing guitar. I was the I was the singer, and uh, we had a keytar player. We didn't have a guitar player, but we had a keytar player. <laughs> we, we plugged the keytar into a super fuzz into a Supro Thunderbolt. Ooh. And it was like, sounded like a fire, like breathing dragon. Wow. 
it was pretty, room, that's pretty awesome. It was pretty intense. Uh, but it's got this cool switch that it, it's like a mid range switch or it's like a scooped mid switch. Mm hmm. And uh, so you get these two really cool sounds. So like, um, like the mid range is kind of like uh, if you listen to uh, the Who, like Live at Leeds, that like album, mm -hmm. all of his solos he did through that pedal with the mid switch. But if you switch it the other way, it's kind of like a uh, really deep, like heavy, fuzzy sound. It's really cool. Anyway, mm -hmm. so the, I use that pedal all the time. Now, is that one of the uh, the orange ones or the uh, the gray ones? Uh, the one I had was an orange one. Yes, uh, I believe the gray ones were pretty much the same. I think they just changed yeah. the color, but I don't. I don't they know. Were, uh, they were. I think those were the the earlier ones. Yeah, yeah. They, were, they were the earlier ones. It just had sort of like a sort of an industrial Univox like oval sticker on the top. But yeah, they, I mean the ones that that everybody really is they're kind of like super nuts over or the uh the orange ones with the blue the blue slab right that giant it was just, it's just cool pedal because it's just huge it's got this big stomp pad you know yeah it's it takes up you know a quarter of your pedal board yeah very like cool that. very cool um and then uh numero four well um i don't know if this counts but a an echoplex so, I like uh, yeah, I like it. We'll, we'll allow it. it. Oh, yeah. Of course. I mean it's on the floor, so sometimes. I mean it depends on who you it. are. Well, I used to yeah, I, I used to put it on the floor and, and just like slam chords into it and move the slider back and forth and get all these crazy spacey sounds, you know. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty awesome. fun. No, that's you, pretty now neat. you just hire somebody. That's to a do that's that. a yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I never could afford to hire somebody. Man, those things are crazy expensive. Uh, have you ever stepped on it or damaged it? No. Um, when I originally got it, it was it looked like it had been in a flood, the mm. one I have. And I bought it for super cheap, and the motor didn't actually work. It was all goofed up, so I actually rebuilt the motor using oh, wow. a, a a drill uh, I took a drill and put a new sh the the bearings were screwed up, <laughs> so <laughs> I like drilled through the bearings and then I just chopped off the drill and used that for the shaft. So it was exactly the same size as the bearings. Huh. Holy! <laughs> and uh, and it works perfectly now. It's it's really awesome. Nice. So, How about if you ever need to fix a Echoplex motor? That's there you I, go. How about that's uh, a, ha a hack? How about as far as uh, tape cartridges? Uh, you know, I haven't bought a cartridge in probably about 12 years. So. Oh, really? Wow. Y yeah. Um, Good old tape. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I haven't, I haven't used it in a long time. I haven't played out really in probably at least five years. Wow. Well, you're going to have to change that at some point. I gotta yeah, find that well. guitar guy and get back in business. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. Well, uh, thanks for sharing your four on the floor, Connor. Um, that was a fun one. It's always great to hear what people are using, what people hold near and dear to their guitars. That's short for guitar hearts, and it, uh, it didn't really work. It didn't work. I I admit that. All right, we're gonna find out all about Connor Kelly and High Spirit Guitars right now. Uh, Ke Connor, so you're out of San Diego area, right? Right. Yeah. We get like hey, Portland and we get, and we get, uh, Tennessee or, you know, Nashville and we get like Philadelphia, like right now. Oh, and Boston. It seems like everybody's in one of those four spots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a lot cheaper to live out there. Yes, it is. Um, I, I, I don't know about Boston, but, uh, San Diego's not not cheap no so it's hard to be a guitar maker in san diego you know yeah um, i think there's a rap song about that um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh so start with the name which you probably have never told this story before so how do you get to high spirit guitars oh that's uh i guess it it's because when i was a child i was really um inspired by native american art mm -hmm. um and just crafts mm -hmm. um so i wanted to call it something other than Connor guitars or Kelly guitars or, um, cause I didn't, I didn't really want it to represent me myself. Um, That's I wanted cool. it to be 
something else. I don't know. I, I didn't want to focus on myself um, so much, but um, it was uh, it was basically because when I was a child, like uh, I was really influenced by Native American crafts, and I wanted to do something that was kind of about that, but not like directly. Mm-hmm. Um, then I, you know, didn't not want to so offend. it's like a gimmick or, or offensive. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So I came up with high spirit guitars. Um, and also originally when I started making guitars, I wanted to name my guitars after spirit animals, um, which ended up turning into birds of prey or made up birds of prey. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it's that's a cool kinda... motif. It's re- and and I actually I really love the logo that you came up with. It's it's super clean. It's it looks cool, and uh, you know I, I'm I'm actually talking specifically about the actual um, the 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 bird wings and the you know the little arrow spare thing. Oh yeah, like on the website. Uh, not yeah. necessarily the headstock one. I haven't gotten there yet, but. Um, uh so yeah so let's see you just mentioned those things you got the chicken hawk and yeah. you got the flamingo hawk yep and yep. the red tail hawk and yep. the tomahawk and the tea hawk and the chicken well we already said chicken hawk so yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing you didn't call it hawk guitars because that would have been a stretch and nobody would have figured out what you're good <laughs> <laughs> um so you got some really cool stuff here and for if you are listening and have not been able to take a peek at what he's doing i think quickly you'll realize hey there's some there's some really neat subtleties that are highly appreciated by this team over here Mm -hmm. as well as a a lot of other people on instagram who have also echoed, echoed that opinion what were you doing before you made guitars? Oh, well, I uh, I graduated college, and then I went back to college, and I was, I was doing uh, musicology. Figured out I wasn't really an academic. I, I kind of came to the point in my life where I knew what I was good at, mm-hmm. and um, that was uh, basically making things. I've always been making things since I was a kid, and... Um, so I did you come to that, that realization yourself or was everybody like Connor, bro, what are you doing? No. Um, <laughs> it was actually, I'm going to say it again. When I was in college, I, um, was studying, um, Detroit and in the sixties. And I realized how much the people there were like, grew up like me in a, like an industrial sort of, culture blue collar culture and that's kind of when i realized that i would you know i was constantly surrounded by these things did you grow up in san diego uh yeah Hmm. Um, those two aren't you typically associated uh, you know blue collar industrial san diego so i'm i'm assuming you're going to tell us about that yeah so my my dad uh so san diego used to be a aviation town Mm -hmm. um so my dad uh, and most of my family worked for this company called General Dynamics. Oh yeah, um, and, which was really big, and they did you know all kinds of stuff, um, you know rockets, spacecraft. My dad worked on space shuttles and stuff. So, anyways, uh, my my dad was very like he's a machinist type. Um, he's very like you know. Uh, He's just very, he's a carpenter, he's a machinist, he's a, you know, you name it. Anything that has to do with making something. He's a craftsman. Uh, He's a craftsman. He's, yeah. And my mother is an artist. So I have two craftsmen. Like what kind of, like an artist, like a Um, sculptor or a painter? She's a uh, a painter, yeah. She's a traditional oil painter painter okay um, i'm glad that she didn't say you didn't say she was a sandwich artist at, the, at subway or something like that <laughs> <laughs> sorry i had to i couldn't i yeah I, I, we'll take any softballs we can get over here <laughs> jared would get too excited yeah. <laughs> true you see what you created yeah Todd, everybody thinks i live for food well i don't know that i created that but <laughs> anyways created everybody well i do like food <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Not that you Anyways, back to Connor and his crafty family. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was always surrounded by um, people doing making things. And um, what's interesting, though, is I, I my parents never kind of taught me anything or pushed it on me. I just kind of absorbed it. Um, or I just had the desire to do it. Um, so I studied art in college and, um, you know, I've, I was always making models and stuff when I was a kid. Uh, so it was really kind of second nature when I started doing it. It was just kind mm-hmm. of very, very, it came very easily, um, easier than doing, uh, playing music actually. Yeah. So processes, uh, artistic process is something that's always interested me because it's like everybody gets from a to b in a different manner but it's really the end result but what's really enjoyable for me is not so much the end result it's how you get from a to b it's like um, that's cool yeah so that that part is where i really get excited um so now when you're talking about the a to b um i'm assuming that because you're more craft oriented, you are liking the production and maybe more than the design. Is that a correct assumption or are you going to prove me dead wrong right now? Again. Um, no, no. Again. I, I, <laughs> I just like um, figuring out ways of doing things. Um, basically, like uh, the art is more in the, the, the manufacturing of the process than the actual product. Um, and that's true with, I think all art really, um, you look at, you know, like famous painters and stuff like that. And it's like, um, there's a whole period of time in like the forties where people were studying just processes and creating processes Mm -hmm. to make art Mm -hmm. instead of just focusing on the end product. So, um, that's always just been a, like an enjoyable thing for me because it's, it's more personal, I think. Um, but, uh. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I can dig it. So on your, let's go back to some of your earliest builds. Did you start with original designs or you know, did you do mm-hmm. like a lot of people start building, you know, strats and tellies and yeah, I well, Yeah. I started with strats and tellies mostly, um, mainly because I wanted to get the like details down, like learning how to do finish and stuff is just a pain. Mm-hmm. Um, can ask anybody it's just probably the most tedious part and um i think a good way to do that is like just doing something that you already know and then focusing on just getting the paint done you know like perfect yeah and then you can move on to like designing stuff and like creating you know a different design because you're gonna have to manufacture a way to create a neck the shape you want and like you know the size and and the scale length and all those things and so focusing on stuff that's already available like you can get a telly template or you can get a a a neck template for a strat or whatever it's easily accessible and you're not having to just uh, make all those things right off the bat um so it it makes it a little it's a lot easier to make something that's already exists um, but, uh, which allows you to focus on your other skills, you know, like painting, fret work, stuff like that. And like really honing in like what makes a guitar great. Um, and then that's when I, once I got to that point, that's when I started designing things. Cause it, that was my ultimate goal, but I wanted to get the, the basic skills, you know, like really polished up yeah. first. Oh, well, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. Now on um, on your original designs, I noticed like uh, some of the cool features uh, would be like the the, the two piece pick guards. The and what really I I, I kind of like are the uh, the tail pieces. Are those ones that you actually designed and built yourself? Mm. Yeah, I designed two different tail pieces. I have a long version for the offset, and then a short one. Um, the short one kind of came afterwards as a a uh, like the. The, the first one I made so much, but I wanted to make something simpler. And what's funny is people keep asking me if they can buy my stuff. And I designed the short one as a solution to buy, to sell it. Um, and then I decided to not sell it because I liked it so much. Yeah. yeah I never um, sell your stuff, man. 
Yeah. So uh, I wanted to make something that, you know, was just specifically to be sold and not part of my guitars, but then I loved it so much. I was like, Oh, I have to use this. This is, this is amazing. Um, so, um, it, that's the problem with making something that you like, you know, <laughs> well, are the, are the bridges something that, uh, that you manufacture too, or are those, um, um, I don't, I design them and I manufactured some of the first ones. Um, and then I, what I do is I design things in 3d design like CAD programs and, um, and then I'll, I'll have somebody make them for mm-hmm. me. So I have a place, there's a few online places that you can get stuff made. Um, there's one in New Jersey that I use all the time. And, and then they just ship me the parts. So I just do the designs and then I try and find a good, efficient way of having those parts manufactured so mm-hmm. that it's not like costing the guitar a lot of money. Um, or I mean, the, it doesn't jack up my price so much and, Right. Part of yeah. part of the reason reason I did all this stuff was because the amount of cost that goes into buying parts for a guitar is like extremely high. Um, so it's a big chunk of your profit. So if I design things, then I can make my prices more affordable for people. Um, so yeah, well, I, li- I like the bridges. They they remind me a little bit of uh, like mastery bridges. The small bridge. Can you open a bottle of suds on the small bridge on on the small hill piece? I bet you could open one on both. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Did, were you thinking about that when you were designing those tail pieces? No, it, no. But genius. Pretty cool. what's funny is I, I when I did the Nam, I did the Nam show before. Uh, COVID. Yeah. yeah, COVID, and pretty much everybody came up was like, dude, can I open my beer on this? I'm like, yeah, sure. Um, I, I still need to drill one of the walls so I can open my beer at work. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, hopefully people are heading over and checking out, If you again, if you're not familiar, checking out the Instagram in particular, I think there's a ton of great shots and great variations, which your, your guitars lend themselves to, I think probably a, a, a relatively high modification factor. Uh, yeah, yeah. In so much as uh, maybe not modification, but variables. That's what I meant to say. Uh, pickups, pickup colors, pick guards, pick guard materials, different kinds of, you know, it's, it's sort of, um, I don't know. I, I feel like this is uh, the type of guitar that you could really make it feel personal without compromising the design. Tell, tell us yeah. a little bit about the um, uh, the hot dog pickups. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I have three versions of the hot dog pickup. And uh, uh, the first version was uh, pretty similar to a P90. Um, but I also wanted to make it more solid, you know, because a P90 usually just screws the wood. It's kind of like, you know, it's always just kind of teetering around yes so this this way would be a little bit more solid and then i started designing different bobbins and things and i've come up with a few different designs of the same pickup because i wanted to keep an aesthetic um so the pickups are pretty different it's just the aesthetic um stays the same um so are they um uh, you said there's three different versions are they still sort of p90ish or burnsish uh, or stratish or the so there's the hot dog which is like a very similar to a p90 um there's the uh chicago dog which is uh, <laughs> has relish and mustard and yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um there's and the chicago seeds. dog which is a uh, lower output and a more focused sort of tone um it's more of a strat n- no not quite the the danger dog is more like a strat, but it, it actually reminds me of a telecaster with uh, more um just more of everything. Mm. Um, well, it's, then so the Chicago dog mm-hmm. then what what's that more shape like then as far as in terms of the coil? Uh the the coil is similar to a um Dynasonic actually. Mm. Oh, okay. 
Um, but it doesn't it doesn't really sound I don't, I don't know I have to sit down and compare the two but I don't think it really sounds like it I just kind of based the the coil off the Dynasonic coil but it doesn't have the same magnets so no. it sounds really good it sounds great yeah. it's just uh, it's its own thing really but it, it just was influenced by those uh, Chicago pickups so no one else makes these these are your pickups yeah the- that's right that's awesome. And the Lava Dog. That's really cool. Well, the Lava Dog is just the cover. Yeah. So I, I make these covers out of uh, like, you know, like you see all the um, the cast uh, stuff on YouTube. Yes. It's the gimmick, the wood gimmick, right? It's yeah. everyone's pouring cast sparkles. Yeah. Uh, that's basically what they are is cast. Uh, but they're actually machined out of blocks of cast. It looks resin. like it's made out of agate. Yeah, they look really cool. Um, so could, the process could, is probably pretty time-consuming to make those, unless you have like some really good tooling that you could just go back and whip them out real quick. Or what's that like? Yeah, I, well, I usually make the lava dogs. I make like a set at a time, but all the other um, pickups, I usually do like I have a whole box of them already made, and I just usually sit and make. Like I'll spend a whole day just making hot dogs. Hmm. You're making me hungry. (laughs) If you, if you, if you ever make it out to Columbus, we've got one of the best hot dog places in the entire universe. Frank's. Oh Oh, yeah. Rad. Frank's hot dogs. Oh my gosh. I haven't been there. I didn't, I never went there yet. (laughs) Out of all the years. I'll have to make a Frank dog. That was, yeah. How about, how about an underdog? Ooh, Ooh. <laughs> real low underwound. Yeah, <laughs> nice. You know, what, you nice know what's tongue. funny is uh, Chris Swope actually already uh, gave me that. He gave me that name. Uh. He, he, uh, which is pretty funny. Uh, I like it a lot. Yeah, it should make an underdog, but I gotta, <laughs> I gotta go. figure out what that underdog's gonna be. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we've we've beat the living tar out of your uh, awesome pickups here. Um, let's talk about some oh, of the nuances great. that you've got going on in the, uh, in the, in the shapes. Um, I think that is, uh, you know, probably one of the, one of the things that when you're flipping through and you're seeing cool guitars on Instagram stuff, you flip through it and you're like, wait a minute, I think I just saw something and the, and then, the, you know, and then in the little shapes, I love the attention to detail that you've put into these. Can you talk to us about how you came to some of these uh, final shapes? Um, well, I, the the first shape I came up with was the the red tail, which is the offset. Yeah, and that was my learning tool for uh, learning CAD. I actually spent like a, a year designing that guitar, and. Uh, um, I, I wanted to make an offset because of course offsets are real popular, but I didn't, I never liked any of the fender offsets. And I know that's a lot of people don't want to hear that, but I think they're ugly. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. But, um, um, so anyways, I wanted to make something really sleek and cool mm-hmm. and sort of inspired by Italian and Japanese guitars. Yeah. And I wanted it to be better, you know. I wanted, I wanted to make a guitar that looked like those cool guitars, but actually played well. Cause there's so many of those cool guitars that just play like garbage. Yeah. Right? Yep. And so that was kind of my goal with that is I wanted to make something that was kind of inspired by that. And then the, the other two, um, were basically me sitting at home during COVID, uh, bored to tears. And so I just started designing guitars and it ended up being a blessing in disguise. I, I wanted to make something really simple to manufacture so I could keep the cost really low. And so that's why those two guitars were both um, really simple designs. And that's why they use the same pick guard and everything because it cuts down on my time making them um, so I can focus on you know making them really nice. you know. Um, so the pick guards are the same. Um, but the shapes are totally different, and they both seem to work really well with that same pick pick guard design. Um, nice. 
Well, yeah. as in, in Germany, as they say, mission accompli. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know they, I didn't know they spoke French in German. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyways, um, I bet it's probably a pretty popular guitar, uh, especially down where you live. That totally fits the vibe down there, you know. Uh, oh, totally. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. What's interesting, though, is that San Diego is like the worst place to try and sell guitars. It's, <laughs> <laughs> nobody buys guitars here, um, really. Uh, it seems like almost all the stuff I sell is mostly on the East Coast. Mm. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I can um, see that doing really well on the East Coast. Yeah, I mean, Maybe I understand, probably, but you know, didn't think, but yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I think most of my sales are outside of California. Um, yep, yeah. Hmm. You, you need to drive up to Camp Pendleton and sell it to the Marines. <laughs> yeah they're always looking for guitars yeah. really yeah really expensive ones too <laughs> yeah. yeah but actually yeah. hey that's a great point your guitars are on a very approachable guitar price absolutely especially for a handmade guitar it's it's kind of it's pretty great well as they, as they say in germany <laughs> the price is the price yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mission, mission accomplished yeah um the the so my goal with this whole thing was I wanted to make guitars that, you know, musicians were going to play. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't want them to sit in some boomers closet, you know? So, uh, <laughs> okay. Boomer. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, you know, um, because it, a lot, a lot of these, um, really high end guitars, it's like, as uh, me as a musician, I couldn't afford to buy a $3,500 guitar. I can't afford to do that. Yeah. So, I Tony something. can. He gets them every week. Whatever. Yeah. Um, 1300 35 is oh, 3500 Yeah. I think yeah. Mo most builders are about $3,500. Yeah, sounds about three right. Grand. Um, so I was, I was hoping that I could make something that, you know, younger people could afford um, and something that was really like usable playable you know i want i want people to play them and enjoy them so that's always been my goal and that's one of the reasons i simplify my manufacturing process so much is so that i can do that you yeah. know if i spend a month building one guitar then i'm not going to eat and nobody's going to play it so basically yeah as my goal was just to make something that was affordable for musicians. That's you know? yeah. and I think that's that's a noble goal, and I think, I mean, really, I do think you've accomplished that. I mean, based on the pricing that you have here and getting something unique. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it's very personal, um, and which which is cool, and and I've noticed people are buying guitars just to fit their aesthetic. You know, yes. They, uh, <laughs> you know, they'll contact me and they're like, "Can you make it this color with this and this and this?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure. Just give me this much time and." Give me a down payment, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, that's good. It's, I mean, you should get a full payment at that at these fantastic prices. Really, I mean. Oh no, I mean just the yeah. I mean to up get front. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, how what's what's a guitar to take for you to turn around? I do right now. I do about four guitars a month. That's pretty good. Not bad. Yeah. So. And you're painting um, them all. Yeah. I right. do everything pretty much, except for manufacture the hardware. Um, so I yeah. just have kind of an assembly line process. Right now I'm in the process of painting about 12 guitars uh, for the next you know, three or four months. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get a lot of stuff done for Christmas uh, because people, you know. Uh, Santa needs they, guitars, man. Yeah. Um, I've been selling – Tons of stuff through the Music Emporium in Massachusetts or Lexington. Awesome. Uh, so they're they're really keeping me very busy. So if you're looking for a guitar, they might have one. You moved to Nashville. Yeah, um, I, I'm actually looking to move possibly out of San Diego. Mm. Uh, just just because I need a shop, like my own shop space right afford. now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. shops in Nashville. Yeah, <laughs> Nashville is, is expensive or more than than San Diego. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, I, I'm to Ohio. I don't know about that, but it's probably Ohio. Um, Ohio. Yeah, that's where we are, it, and it's it's 
pretty great out here. Hey, um, speaking of n- not Ohio at all, um, but um, <laughs> uh, uh, you're, you're, you're man- the manufacturing uh, of what you're doing, you're very much akin to, uh, are you familiar with Cal Brand Design? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You guys are like right in the same bathtub there. I know oh, okay. that's a weird thing. I, I don't uh, know why I said that. Uh, uh, You're yeah. in the same boat. Okay. Maybe that's the bat. Maybe it's made out of a bat. I don't know. Uh, but it's no. you know I'm looking at that and you were telling me how you're making all this stuff. I was like, man, this sounds this sounds just like Cal Brand. Mm-hmm. Um, in the way that you have both decided where you're going to put your creative efforts and your signatures and uh, your nuances. Hmm. Yeah, that's very admirable. Very cool. In the same bathtub. <laughs> All right. Edit that from your minds. I'm really sorry for that visual. I did not mean that. So um, do you have any other uh, new designs coming out that you're thinking of? You're working on the um, on the drafting table? Right now, I'm just working on finishing, getting a base. Um, oh, I get, cool. yeah, I get about at least one email a month about a base. And so I'm I'm working on a short scale base that is basically the tomahawk or the flamingo hawk, but in a base, a short scale base. Mm. Um, so it'd be kind of like a Mustang base or something like that. Like an um, Evo. Yeah. So it'll it'll be fun. Everyone's kind of excited about that. So cool, man. Yeah. Right on. Well, Connor, it has been a blast uh, hearing all about your awesome guitars, the high spirit guitars, and uh, ooh, that white one with the black pickguard looks pretty tight. You guys need to go over and get one of these. Just um, you're kind of not gonna walk away from not wanting one. And Christmas is coming up, so get your orders in, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do that. Do that. We are going to row our own bathtub over to Jared's house. <laughs> Rub a dub dub. <laughs> Yay! Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our favorite game on the show called Would You Rather? And it's our only game. It's our favorite only game. (laughs) That's correct. So you're walking down the street, and a sketchy guy in a long trench coat jumps out of the alley. Oh, no! He opens his trench coat, and in one hand, he has Les Paul's iconic number one, 1951-ish Les Paul gold top, the one that just sold for almost a million. And in the other hand, he has Johnny Ramone's 1965 Moserite Ventures Mark G. Which also sold for just about a million dollars. Yes, that's correct. So So this creep's got... $2 $2 million worth of his guitars under his nasty trench coat. Mm. Yep. Oh, my. Which So they, they almost sold for a million, like we said, for the fifth time. So you're a little suspicious. Anyhow, which guitar would you buy for $100 if you were <laughs> able to buy one of the, those, those guitars off the creepy guy in the trench coat for 100 bucks? Which one would it be? Duh. <laughs> so, so what you're saying? Maybe not so much duh. So what you're saying? There's Les Paul's n- number one, and that mm-hmm. was that was actually the first guitar. It's a gold top uh, that he approved, and that's got for, cream. So cream, uh, not P90s? well. It's it's had many different okay. pickups. It right. probably originally yeah. would have had P90s in it, but he monkeyed around. Tried with it everything. And, yeah, he did he a lot of stuff. He, yeah, so the pickup could slide up and down so we can find the right spot to put the pickup in. Yeah. And that was, I think that one sold for $930,000 just a couple right. of days ago. It's all relative. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's, you know, that's lunch around here. Yeah. Or there's Johnny Ramone's beat up old Moserite Mark II. Yep. That is, uh, I mean, that's, that's, that's iconic. It's an iconic. Both of these are iconic instruments. Who's Johnny Ramone? Uh, no, there was this uh, guitar player in the band called the Ramones. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. I'm sorry. Go on. <laughs> hey, did you know how the Ramones They played got their with name? Kansas. Yeah. They opened for Kansas. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you know how the Ramones got their name? Tell us, Tony. From Paul McCartney. Because oh. Paul Ramone was his stage name 
in the early days. How about that? That's how the Ramones got the name. I love that. A little bit of trivia from Little Know trivia. It All Tony. And, and I mean one, that in the in the kindest of ways, because yes. you do know crap. Oh, my gosh, you know so much stuff. So that one sold a couple of weeks ago for like 937 970 No, 937. 937. Well, 937. maybe with the, with the auction fees yeah, and everything. Okay. It was almost a right. million dollars. Yeah. Both of these almost a million dollars. Yeah. Very how, does, uh, how did this sketchy guy get this stuff? In a dirty old That's nasty a trench coat. Very good question. Mm, More importantly, yeah. what is the guy who had those doing in that dirty old alley? So uh, <laughs> we need to find out what Tony wants to do with this would you rather. <laughs> <laughs> Segue out of this. I think he's decomposing. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, um, you know, I love Les Paul. He was, you know, obviously a groundbreaker. But every time I see that Moserite Mark II that Johnny Ramone played and beat the crap out of, I mean, it, it, I just was looking at before the show at, at some of the photos from the auction. And, I mean, this thing is just... Hammered. It's, it is, yeah. It, it lived... It was it's got ridden, the original strap on it. It was ridden hard and put away wet. Yep. And I think, I mean, out of those two... I'm going with the Ramones guitar. All right. All right. Jared? Uh, I'll probably also go with the Ramones guitar. What? Because no, you're whoever... Not. You're a lion sack. No, no, because I can pretty much bet that if, you know, where I work, if we wanted to see that guitar, it would make its way to, to where I work. That's not... So I would be but... able to get that, to, to see that, too. Yeah, but you get to own it for a hundred bucks. Ramones. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Shocking. Yeah, I'll I'll see the other one. All, all right. right. If I'll never see the Ramones guitar if I pass that up. It's yeah, but you're not see, see you, you get to walk away with it. It's not. He's not going to put it back in his trench coat and run off. No, uh, I mean. All right. Yeah. But, okay, you're you're on Tony Island. All right. uh, Connor, what are you doing? Oh, I would probably get the Ramones guitar. Well, and baby makes four. Ah, yeah. I've got a full. I've got <laughs> Tony's got a full house. All rooms are filled on the island. Yeah, uh, I mean that's a no-brainer for me. It's yeah. absolutely a no-brainer. Yeah, um, I am a more a student of music than I am of uh, historic guitars, and, okay. and you know, for that the, it, it makes me. Nobody knew of that Les Paul being what it was until it actually surfaced a month ago. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, exactly. So it, it is not famous. It's now famous, but not nearly as famous as the Ramon guitar. Yeah. So, it's a yeah. million dollars worth famous. Yep. Yes. Uh, all right. That was a good one. Um, Tony Tony uh, cooked that one up in his uh, own mind. By all by him, all by himself. I did it by myself. <laughs> uh, we need to say thank you to a handful of people. Yes, Todd, we do. And then we're going to say thank you and bid uh, Connor, as they say in South America, adieu. <laughs> uh, okay. To you no? and you. Yeah. And you. <laughs> Go ahead. You know, Todd, at this point of the show, there's a very special group of people that we like to thank. Right. These are our executive producers. Now, you might be wondering what's an executive producer. More importantly, how can I, as a mere mortal, become one? Yeah. It's quite easy. You go over to patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. Check out a couple different levels in which you can participate. Become a sponsor of this very podcast. Each level comes with a great bevy of thank you gifts, including things like barefoot buttons and, and stickers and pics and T-shirts and keychains and flashlights and uh, what else, Todd? Um, but lots of things. Uh, lots. Lots. Yeah. But as an executive producer, you get all the great stuff. I'm, I'm not telling any lies here. You get all the great stuff. Mm. But there's one thing more. Mm -hmm. Jared, what's that? You get to have your name read on the thing. Your name read on the thing, in addition to being on my iPhone. So special thanks to these executive producers. <gasps> Big breath in. Tom Brazen. Hey. Darren Gregory. Doug Christ. Ken Sayers. Michael Senchuk. Stefan Lamb. Anthony Lathrop. 
John Anglin, John Esterley, Justin Jones, James White, Matt Hart, Bill Gola guitars, Richard Kendall, Tyg Harmon, John Jackson, Jason Rausch, uh, Gary Cooper, Mark Garten, Elad Mazrahi, Magadi, Trevor Gunberg, Rick Calhoun, Anthony Gimilero, John Helverson, and Drew Lopez. Yes, not Andrew Lopez, but Drew Lopez. Andrew Lopez. And, no, or, Andrew. Or Drew Lopez well, maybe, also. Maybe his name might be Andrew. <laughs> maybe. And he goes by Drew. Yes. But stop interrupting me, Sorry. Todd, because there's another very special group of people that we have to thank these. Who are they? They're our grand poobas. Yes. So, you know, you take an executive producer, you nudge him up two floors to the penthouse suite, you got yourself grand poobas. Mm -hmm. So these very special cats get to wear a fez while listening to the podcast. Mm -hmm. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to thank these grand poobas. Jonathan Jerusik, Corey Nigro, David Kaminga, Science of Sound, Cody Foster, Sean S. 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 Tommy Manasco, Adam Johnson, Steve Keys, Tim Nowak. Tyler Rines, James Pennington, LSJ Music Company, John Williams, Johnny Morales, Mel Sanders, Bob Crouch, Sam Jett, Michio Murakishi, Martin Cliff, Hex Matos, Michael Van Zant, Andrew DeHaan. We've got an upgrade this week. Hey, oh. Upgrade. Is it? Brian Robinson. Yeah. Hey! He went from a mere executive producer to the great realm of. Grand Poobas. Mm. Enjoy your orange crush. Oh, wait. There's one more. Uh -huh. We have one of our boomerangs. Yes. You know that, what means, that means? That means somebody who's like, hey, I got to take a break. But I'm back. And he's back in a big way. Mm-hmm. John Daly. Right on. Hey, thank you. Back. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, Connor, it has been great fun, at least for us. <laughs> uh having you on the show uh you're a delight to talk to and you're making some outstanding uh awesome guitars stuff, yes good job um, where can people go to get one of your awesome things uh well uh the music emporium in lexington or mo's guitars in la mesa or you can contact me directly through ispiritluthria at gmail.com Right. And if you can't remember any of that, just go to high spirit guitar high spirit guitar on the uh on the internet dot com or uh go to Instagram and send him a DM and say, Man, I'm blinded by awesomeness. I just need a way to <laughs> to contact you. Uh Anthony? Yeah. Well, why don't you just go over to pickguardian.com, check out some of the stuff I have available for buying. But you know what? I do a lot of custom work and probably is best. Just shoot me an email. Let me know what you need, what you're thinking. I might have some tips for you. Mm -hmm. All right. Jared? Uh, get a hold of me through the Guitar Knob social medias. And if you have any questions about pickups or stuff like that, I would be more than happy to answer. Send me your would you rather. Yes. And uh, Jared's busy working on his own Instagram to uh, Very. help accommodate most of this. So you can send me an email, Todd at theguitarnobs.com. You can also DM me, as Jared just said, at Guitar Knobs. Send any of us or all of us uh, a question or comment. We'd love to hear from you. Get your would you rathers in. Connor, we're going to say thank you very much. All right. We'll talk to you later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, everybody have a fantastic guitar weekend. Subscribe! Arg. Yeah, yeah the cobbler's children have no shoes. No, that's not it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> that peak up gay. Yeah. Like a gaggle. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Wait a minute. Sure. Wait. Look at this. Huh? Look at what I just found. It's kind of crispy, dog. Jared Brandon. <laughs> That's so Jared. <laughs> what kind of pizza did you oh, eat? Just a normal one. <laughs> you have one and a half jobs. Two? No, you've got three jobs now. No, That's... I'm burping up pizza. 
Well, that's it for these knobs. Please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. Visit our website at theguitarknobs.com for all of our past episodes, four on the floor blog, and other good stuff. You can connect with us on social too at our Facebook page and share your gear and stories on our Facebook group. Also, be sure to check out our Instagram at guitar knobs. Catch you next time.